What tests do you know? Just throw them at me. We'll list them in order as fast as we can go. Geometric. Two. Uh, P test. What else? Test for divergence. What else? Integral. What else? Comparison. It's limit comparison. Yes. That's where I got the limit. So six, the limit comparison. We covered a new one last time. Which one? The harmonic. Harmonic's a P test, so it's it's a subset of another one. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that one off the list. But the harmonic series diverges because P equals one, but it's the alternating one. And in fact, there's the alternating harmonic, which does converge when the harmonic doesn't, but it's the alternating series test. All right, so let's remember what these all do. Geometric. When is something geometric? That's when it converges, but how do you tell if it is? So A plus AR plus AR squared plus AR cubed plus so on converges if the absolute value of r is less than 1, diverges if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1. Okay? P-test. Uh, it's the n. It's the actual index. So n to the p. So 1 over 1 to the p, 1 over 2 to the p, 1 over 3 to the p. And when does that converge? Yeah, it converges when it's greater than 1, so like 2, 3, 4, 5, even 1.000001 1 converges, but it diverges when P is less than or equal to 1. All right, what's the test for divergence? If the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n doesn't exist or... The limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is not equal to zero, then diverges. Okay, if they go to zero, you know nothing. Okay, integral test. Is continuous, positive, decreasing at f of n equals a sub n, right, for all n. That's, that's where I'm getting the f, just by the way. It's the function that matches whatever the series is. So if it's 1 over n, it's 1 over x, right? Okay. Then you do the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx, right? Converges if, how do I say this? Uh, what do I say in the notes? So if the integral converges, uh, series is the same as integral. That's basically the integral test. If the integral diverges, Series. series diverges if the integral converges, series converges. By the way, integral test is the last test to ever apply. We'll learn that later today. It's the, it's the least favorite of all of these. All right, comparison test. So you have the unknown versus the known, okay? And if a sub n is less than or equal to b sub n for all n and b n converges then a n converges if a n is bigger than or equal to b n for all n and b n diverges then a n 
diverges. And the hard part about this one is finding the actual B sub N that you can bound above or bound below, which is why we like the limit comparison test a little bit better, right? A N is unknown versus B N is again known. All right, now what do we do to apply the limit comparison test? You take the limit of a n over b n. Actually, it doesn't matter which one's on top, which one's on bottom, is that if this goes to c and c is not 0 and c is positive, actually, I could just say if c is greater than 0, but not infinity, then these two series are the same. Meaning they both converge or they both diverge. Since B is known, that's going to tell you what A sub N does. Okay. And this one almost always in the cases that we've been looking at is where we apply a Bobo, Botten, each DC to figure out what happens here. And you choose this based on... Um, as best you can tell, what does this one behave like for large n? We'll do some more examples of that even later today. All right, the last one's the alternating series test. Alternating series test means you have something that looks like this. The sign is bouncing back and forth. It could also be the sum negative 1 n plus 1 b sub n where the B sub n's are positive. Now, when does the alternating series converge? It gets smaller and it's the one time on the, you know, in the opposite of the test for divergence where you actually know something. So if it actually goes to zero and it's alternating, that's enough to say it converges, okay? So it converges if the terms get smaller and the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n is 0. Those are the seven tests we know so far. So as long as the absolute where b sub n is actually the absolute value of the a sub n's, then you can check if it converges using that test right there. All right, so that's our quick review of the tests. I'm going to do that one more time again, and probably we'll do it on Wednesday and again on Friday. Just talk through them one more time so you see all the tests at once and you know all of the criteria. We'll practice applying them in the 11.7 section, but also in the, in our, on our, uh, our hour at 11 today. I'm not going to type anything like this up. You're probably going to want to have something handy like this written up on your own note card for the upcoming test. Yes, you can have a note card like we've done before. So you'll want your tests on there. Number eight, ratio, ratio test. Can you put this, on the uh, this video, uh, yeah, I'm recording this so you can rewrite it up. I can also print this to a PDF so you can write it up yourself. All right, so the ratio test says if you got the series a sub n, then what you do is take the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n equals L. And if L is less than 1, then it's absolutely convergent. And if L is greater than 1, divergent. And then 9, yeah, exactly. If it's equal to 1 you know nothing. Sum a sub n, you do the same thing. If you've got the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of a sub n, and that's L, then if L is less than 1, absolutely convergent. And if L is greater than 1, 
divergent and if e equals 1, you don't know anything. But that's, I didn't even get a name, sorry. This is root test. Okay. So that's our nine tests that we need to be able to apply and use on the test. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pass out a handout from 11.7, and then we're going to start doing just some examples together and trying to decide which one to use.